right. Another day, another your daily scrum. Todd, we're both awake. Going? We're awake. Yeah, we're not. It's not <laughs> dead of morning. It's not crazy. I like it. So yeah. I'm Ryan Ripley, professional scrum trainer with scrum.org. This gentleman over yonder, Todd Miller, another PST with scrum.org. Together we formed Hello. Agile for Humans, top training company on the planet. That might be a little excessive. We'll see. But what we do each day is try to bring a question and an answer forward to help you have a better day, a better scrum practice to help answer your questions. Leave us some comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. Be a participant. The community is active. It's vibrant. Take part. All you have to do is leave a comment to get started. Today, Todd, what do we got? How about this? What's important when interviewing a scrum master? Hmm. I think we have some opinions here. Yeah, I think this is good to view from both perspectives for those of you out there getting to ready to interview for scrum master positions and those of you that are going to be interviewing people for scrum masters. I'd say most of the time, uh, Ryan, when we see scrum master, uh, let's say desires as far as qualifications, it's a little scary, isn't it? Yeah, the job postings are usually pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> they are. It looks like a project manager masquerading as a scrum master kind of. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I, I think you just have to decide uh, if we're on the scrum master side of the interview process, we just have to decide what we're what we're after. Mm -hmm. You know, if we want to work with a company that's in mid transition, they still don't quite get it or they're still posting for project managers. But they realize maybe we're going to jump in and be helpful, you know, start coaching the company. And or maybe we're looking for more of a a company that's about, you know, real scrum mastery things. And, and so you got to watch the, the postings pretty carefully, um, ask some good questions, things like that. So when you're interviewing, you know, try to dig into if I'm a scrum master interviewing with a company, I want to know where they're at and what they expect of me. Does it really look does does it look more like a delivery manager? Does it look more like a project manager? Does it look more like a tech lead or team lead? And just make sure I'm no I know what I'm getting into up front through really good questions really good observation. You know, I don't know about you, Todd, but I've been, um, I've, I've, I've failed to ask good questions and ended up in a position I didn't want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. That's happened to me quite a bit as well. Um, and you know, uh, on the reverse side of that too, I've, I've taken a very, um, academic approach to interviewing and ended up with people that quite frankly, were not meant to be scrum masters. Right. So, um, I think, I think that you have a pretty strong stance that I that I fully agree with on, on how we how we might approach that uh, uh, that interview um, from either side of it. But um, uh, I'm pretty in tune with it. You're going to you're going to show us show us. Right. Yeah. You know, I've got this idea around hiring that we talk about sometimes in the PAL class if it comes up. Um, this is something kind of custom that, that I've been playing with and that, Todd, you've really helped me kind of flesh out. And it's just really talking about. Um, traditional hiring versus what we would expect to see if we were, if I'm hiring, if it's our money, if we're hired, sometimes we get hired to actually uh, help companies build teams, which is a lot of fun. It's fun spending other people's money, but uh, I don't like the traditional process. It really is weird. It, you know, mm -hmm. you have a job post, which may or may not be good. You have your HR screens and all that stuff, which is great. We have to follow local laws and make sure all that stuff is good. They check social media. Ooh. Man, I'm so glad we don't have to do that now, right? <laughs> the, the resume gets reviewed and the manager does the phone screens. And then, like, let's say you, we, we get to that point where you're in the office doing the interview. This is first date mode for me. Mm -hmm. Everyone's on their best behavior. Everyone's showing the best possible viewpoint of them as an employee as, and them as a company. It's not real. Um, usually there's a panel of questions, right? We play stump the chump with each other. And it's usually a standard set of questions because of some rules around um, different hiring practices. And then HR does a follow up and everyone chit chats. And would we have a beer with this person? Yes or no? And blah, blah, blah. And if we say yes, we're going to negotiate onboard 90 day probation. If you make it through that, you're in. And this leads to a lot of problems. Uh, I think it means that we end up hiring a lot of people that look and sound and talk like us. So from a diversity and inclusion perspective, this is problematic. Um, using the same set of questions could be biased. It also, um, what I found with this method, the same set of questions over and over, um, people were showing up really super prepared on what should have been hard questions. And it turns out that our questions got posted to glassdoor.com. And suddenly people were just acing the, uh, the interview. 
and that was irritating. And this whole process just it it's so mechanical. It's so it's like building a Ford. It's not hiring a person, mm-hmm. you know. And so something you and I have been talking about a lot is how could we apply the agile principles and values, specifically the scrum values to a practice. And so just super quick, trash the resumes. Who cares? Most of them are lies. We embellish. Let's just get through the HR screens. Let's get through the phone screens. Let's figure out who we want to talk to based off of you know HR's approval, some phone screens. Let's get some people in the door. One exception, if you have a PSM3, I don't know about Utah, but if you have that certification, I'm going to bring you right in for the interview. We're not going to mess about. 100%, 100%, yeah. So if you can earn that sucker, you're going to have an interview with Todd and I if we're hiring um, all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, we're going to go through the normal screens. HR has to do their legal stuff. The manager needs to talk to the person. We need to select people we're going to interview. But when we conduct the interview, I want to shift it to real things. You know, I want to put a candidate in front of a dry erase board or these days on mural and say, teach me scrum. Right. Mm -hmm. And if they start drawing release trains and some other weirdness, that's not a deal breaker. Then we get to see if they're coachable. Can I shoot an idea at them that's a little different than theirs and see if they're cool with it? And if they're not, that might be a time to stop the interview process, give some feedback. But I'll talk about that in a second. Um, it, or if they're coachable, let's move on to facilitating a daily scrum. Can they facilitate? Can they work with, you know, plus this means the teams that they're going to work with get a chance to take a look at them too, which is pretty awesome, right? We're going to see if there's some good fits, but we can also see, do they understand the purpose of the event? Can they facilitate it in a way that's for the devs, not for them, the scrum master? And let's say they get through that just fine. The last step, what I like to see is facilitate a retro. Todd, I think you and I can see a lot in, in into the, the inner workings of a scrum master just by how well they do it a retro. hundred percent. Just the way they interact with the team, uh, where their, where their thought process is at in the meaningfulness of events. Right. So I think a, a retrospective is a great opportunity to, to check that out. Now, if this candidate gets through all three of these, they're coachable, they can facilitate, they can work with a team and get a good improvement item. And they're showing a high level of skill and different coaching and facilitation and teaching and all these different, we're testing the stances here, right? Mm -hmm. We're testing with real work. Uh, We're probably going to try, not probably, we're going to give them a job offer on the spot, right? Because if you let these great candidates wait three to six months, like some of these large companies do, they just get sucked up by people who can move faster. Right. Great mm-hmm. candidates do not stay on the market very long. Now, if this person had a, a few areas that we thought were, that were rough, we're going to give them a PowerPoint or some kind of document that just says, look, here's what we loved about you. Here's the amazing things we saw. Here's a few things that we'd love for you to improve. And if you improve those, we'd love to have you come back and do this again. Right. We want it. It's a not yet. It's not a no. And we also give them a book. Right. So I used to give out uh, Scrum Mastery by Jeff Watts. But with you know, Todd and I, we, Todd, we have a book. We it's do. pretty good book. I so think so. We, yeah. So now we give them a copy of Fixing Your Scrum. So not only have we given them positive feedback with some improvement items, we've given them a book that we think can help them improve. We think Fixing Your Scrum is a great way to level up. Um, but we also, at the end, hand them a few hundred dollars in Amazon gift cards because we're going to pay them for their time. They did real work. They helped us out. So we're going to respect that too. And as it turns out, the people who are told not yet become our biggest advertisers for the job. They can't, they can't tell enough people about how awesome this process was. It honors um, their time. It, it's respectful. It's our commitment to excellence. It's our focus on skills, not pretty uh, resumes and all the right answers in a, in a mock interview setup. And I think it just brings out the best in people and gives us an opportunity from a hiring perspective to, to check out the person, gives a person... Uh, from gives the uh, the scrum master an opportunity to check out what the company is about. And at the end, I think it leads to better decisions. What do you think, Miller? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, one of the biggest things I like to ask is what, what don't you know? Right. Um, because I think that what I, 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 even if they don't understand the finer intricacies of scrum, I can help them with that. Right. It's the approach to the job that I'm most concerned about, right? And 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 understanding that we don't know what we don't know, and uh, there's always going to be an opportunity to learn. So I go back to that first portion that you said there: Are they coaching? So, yeah, you know what? At this point in our careers, Todd, I, I think we can teach people the framework. Yeah. So we're really looking for mindset. We're looking for approach. We're looking for where their heart's at as far as the role. Um, 
that stuff is harder to teach and train. But if we get the right candidate in with the right mindset, we can teach them a lot of the skills they need. So the secondary approach that I showed, um, I think that gets more to the skills and less to the mechanics. And maybe that could be helpful for you. Let us know in the comments, right? We're going a little long here, but hopefully you got some value out of this. Let us know in the comments, how do you hire Scrum Masters? What's important to you? I think we're going to switch this over to the end panel. Be sure to like and subscribe. We've got a lot of videos dropping soon. Want to make sure you're in sync with uh, with your daily scrums and keep up with the, with the show. Uh, check out the videos below. The AI thinks they're important for you, and we do too. All the socials are listed. Um, you know what? Go forward and hire great people, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, everybody.